I'm Wendy Catewell, an experienced counsellor and psychotherapist. I work with so many people who feel that they're the only one struggling with the issues that they share with me. Possibly, like many of you, they feel so alone. And so the aim of this podcast is to talk to guests who have their own stories to share, their experience of the struggles that they've been through, or maybe they're continuing to live with, offering their insights as well as their inspiring journey. So let me introduce my guest. Now I'm going to introduce a really lovely good friend of mine and a very, very experienced psychotherapist. Um, she's amazing. Ah, uh, I've said it again, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I can tolerate and accept amazing. Um, uh, it's a little, well, it was something that cropped up earlier where we were talking. Some, some people can't tolerate amazing, but I think she has some, I think she has some incredible qualities. So yes, that's why I'm saying it. Um, so I'm going to hand over Mel. Introduce yourself, please. I am Mel Riley. Thank you, Wendy, for a lovely introduction. Um, I am a adult child and family therapist. I am also a crazy dog lover, um, a hat wearer, the mad hatter. Um, I um, also love photography, poetry, and I've just started painting. So all around creative and also neurodiverse and I have a um, I'm going to use this word and emphasize it and I want to underline it and put it in red pen living experience of trauma um, I am quite passionate about that ing because what we as as often when we're talking about uh, trauma it's a we talk about a lived experience like it's way back in the in the in the distance it's in the far view mirror but actually we're not dead we're living and actually as I'm going through some new stuff um, I'm updating it's not lived it's living it's not recovered it's recovering and we can be hurled back into stuff um, at any time yeah yeah yeah, and I also adding to that, which is another one of your phrases, is healing. It's an ing. It's always an ing thing. It's it's, ing. it's a dynamic process. Life is a dynamic process. It's so dynamic that by the time you've wrote and written about it, it's out of date. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. blows my head off as somebody who's neurodiverse, but also a really um, divergent thinker who thinks deep, long, and from lots of different angles. I can like, where's the end? Is like there isn't one. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's it. And 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 you and I both get quite rattled when we see um, people <laughs> telling us that they are. Or claiming that they're trauma informed. You we when... used the word rattled. Um, disclaimer. Um, uh, there's no bleeping machine here. I get right, royally fucked off. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because you're right. The language and um, even the language around trauma doesn't fit our experiences. And I've got you know I've had some new knowing this year. Um, having uh, uh, had some new trauma. Um, and and yeah, at one point it was locked in a psych ward. I wasn't there long because you don't lock somebody who is uh, 20 years experience with trauma in a psych ward because I can intelligently argue my way out. And there's not much the doctors would say or do that to argue no. Um, but yeah, actually through my own living experience and upgrades, we talk about panic attacks. It's not panic. Actually, if you're, for some people, um, it is blind terror. Mm. Yeah. I've never seen blind terror written anywhere. It has blind terror attacks. Yeah. No, it's not a phrase. And, and people talk about um, panic attacks. as the, and, and that seems to cover a lot of things when sometimes it is an anxiety attack. It's not a panic attack. And it's not certainly not a terror attack. They, they and some people don't even know what's going on in their bodies when they have yeah. 
when they become dysregulated. Yeah. I've, I've got a, a video. Even that word, let's, even that word, dysregulation, it's one we use a lot as therapists, but actually somebody asked me, what does that mean? Yeah. So yeah. even that is jargon. Actually, dysregulation is that something has triggered you, uh, in has triggered your fight, flight, freeze, yeah. and fawn or friend response, because we don't use that one either. Um, and your heart rate's gone up. Um, you've got noradrenaline, cortisol, um, and um, adrenaline pumping around your system. And mm -hmm. we and so we offer this notion that you just need to breathe and it will be fine. And it's just yeah. so fucking inaccurate yeah. because actually learning to retrain a nervous system, yeah, um, that is either shattered or is is dis is 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 dysregulated or going up into um hypervigilance mm -hmm. or on guard all the time or is collapsing into um a dysregular uh, into a disassociated or a frozen state yeah um, and we can bounce between these two in the same day or the same yeah. hour um because the what the body does is we don't we blame ourselves when actually your body is so sophisticated it's doing lots of things to stop you feeling overwhelmed to keep you safe um but it can also keep you stuck yeah yeah absolutely and i think that's that's you know part of why i hand out leaflet and give explanations because often people have come to me and they've said well my my gp's giving me medication i said have they explained what's going on in your body and they go no i don't no. know and so when you i hand this to them, i said would you like to have a read of this do any of this resonate with you and they you can see them going yeah 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 but no one's ever explained it. All right, we hear the fight or flight response, but that's as far as it goes. You call yeah. it uh, fight, flight, freeze, fall. I call it flop. Yeah. Well, actually, there's a there's 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 fight, there's flight, there's freeze yeah. or flop. You can use yeah. freeze or flop, but there's yeah. another one. Oh, friend. Yes. Friend or fawn. Yeah. Or, or fawn or friend. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. yeah. So I'm not. Yeah, I, I, we're on the same page, but it just is those pe people don't hear those. They don't yeah. you know, aware of them. I got taught that probably about 18 years ago, but people only seem to talk about the fight or flight response. They, But even the fawn or the flop response, they have no idea what that means. Yeah. And I, I liken it to a, an animal. You have an animal say... Um, I'm going to say uh, a cheetah, and it's caught, um, for example, oh, God, what is it? So a, a small bird or a small animal. Yeah. And it will grab it, but then the, the animal will then, the, the, the victim of it who's been caught, will just play dead. So then the, the cheetah will just let, let the grip just gently to get a better grip. But actually... That's the time when that animal can run mm -hmm. because they play dead. The cheetah believes they're dead and it's given that animal that chance to actually run away. And I think Do you know why? Do you know why um, the dead? Um, I use a cat and a mouse and actually okay. the mouse plays dead because it actually... Um, Wild animals don't eat dead things because no. they prefer things that they kill. There are a couple that are scavengers, but on the whole, they prefer to catch their food and eat it because if it's dead, it's going to give you a bad a bad tummy. Yeah. So actually, I I play dead. You don't want to eat me because I'm dead, and you leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. Um. So I freeze, or I run, or I fight, and it, these are split second decisions. Can I outrun you? Can I fight you? Or do I freeze and play dead? And actually, animals then have the ability to shake their trauma and carry yes. on. Yes. Um. We 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 don't have David Borselli's work talks about Trey talks about sh how we can shake off our trauma. So if anybody's interested, yeah. you can have go and have a look at that. 
But also, we also don't know that the drive that the drivers um, were in high stress um, situations. Some of our drivers go offline. So our sex drive, our hunger yeah. drive, yeah. our play drive, all the pleasure drives, they go offline because yeah. it's not useful for this mouse who's facing the big scary cat to think, hmm, I need a sandwich. He'd be dead. Oh, I need a shag. I'd be dead. Oh, I I actually just think I'll just, you know, I'll just have a quick dance around here or have a play. You'd be dead. So our body is designed to shut down these drivers um, for play, for food, for pleasure seeking. Yeah, yeah. for sex. Um, and so when people are coming to us for support, these are all stories we hear. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm in. I can't get into rest or digest homeostasis calm. Um, I'm too elevated or I can't get out of bed because actually it's called dorsal collapse. You know, a polyvagal theory. I've gone, I, 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 it's so over. You did it to me this morning. I was like, mm, you know, I'm, I'm a struggle. And then like, do you want to record? And my little ping pleasure um, circuit switches on. It's like, yay, Wendy, something to do, uh, something nice to do. Um, and so because I'm in this kind of, shitty transition stage where I feel a bit lost sometimes and so we can bounce in and out of overwhelmed um our body shuts down in depression grief if you, yeah grief shuts us down it's too overwhelming and so stages of depression grief yeah um uh, uh um there, there are more we don't talk about anxiety not feeling safe so we can we're bouncing in in and out of these states what is anxiety it's too busy yeah. yeah, busy, 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 yeah. busy, and we burn yeah. out. And depression. This, I, this is my technique. I, you can't see because I'm, I'm. It's not alive. So you can have to imagine. I've got this Mister Man, and he's running around, busy, 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 and then yeah. he falls over, flop. I can't yeah. do this anymore. I'm burnt out, and yeah. so actually, I, I end up in depression. Yeah? yeah, and we can keep going in and out. They go to. There's a reason they go together. We get episodes of depression and anxiety busy 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 flop busy busy yeah. busy yeah so it, it often it's a pacing issue when we're working with trauma it's a pace it, it's feeling safe enough to slow down a little yeah? yeah and what does that mean or feel like and that's that can be different for all of us I think the difficulty we have is getting all the pieces together like I I know that going at doing a weight session will be good for me but I don't feel safe enough or I'm too anxious to get out the house and go to the gym. Yeah. yeah. So actually I might need to start in a different place. Yeah. Um, it might be that I, I, I do it, I, you know, I get weights and do them at home. It might, yeah, it might be that I use cans of baked beans, you know, actually, can I start smaller? Um, can I start really tiny by just lifting this, this heavy thing um yeah it, it you might have to because i can't push through yet to do that bigger thing over there so my my philosophy when we're dealing with trauma is if it's too big make it smaller yeah yeah because it's I, and it's also the getting I, going that is the yeah. hard bit yeah i i sometimes even go further back with could you imagine because yeah then you're, the imagining it is not taking the action if it's that tiny because I think that is, I love that you brought imagination in. I worked with Bessel van der Kolk in Italy. And one of the things he said is that therapists are hope merchants. We hold the hope. And he said, and, you know, we get onto all these arguments about ther theories, which theory is best. And actually anything that has us imagining new possibilities that opens up imagination is useful if you can't imagine it you can't create it and this is where I really come into my own as a creative therapist as a play therapist yeah. um um uh, Bruce Perry's work talks about the brain being muscles and so if you don't stretch the creative imaginative muscles just like yeah. you'd if you worked your biceps then they don't work conversations require this creative imaginative part of our brain that we can construct a sentence that we can um, think about what to ask you how do we keep this conversation going 
social anxiety, I think, is a lack of working of the, the, the creative and imaginative parts of our brain. Because when I get in front of you, I'm frightened. It's a fear of people. I'm frightened and I freeze. I can't access the creative, imaginative parts of my brain. I can't, I can't access the speech region, the buckle region. I may not access the Whitaker region, which is responsible for our, the, the, the breathing pattern when we're speaking. So as it all goes a little bit haywire in there and I feel stupid um, when I meet a new person, the shame of that arrives. So actually what I decide to do is I avoid. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I'm working with somebody, we can stretch that creative, imaginative brain through play, um, through um, uh, tolerating the shame. We can try new things, whether it's poetry, whether it's painting, whether it's gardening, mm -hmm. when we can dare to be not good at it. Yeah. yeah. And we can do it through, um, like, games. Like, um, I had a lovely session once. We, we were absolutely in floods of laughter when I said, okay, let's play a game. Let's stretch your creative, imaginative brain. Um, uh, we get a wheelie bin. He's, his name's Fred and he's going on holiday. Where is he going? And she's like, oh. And then she's like, Barbados. And I'm like, okay, he's going to Barbados. What's he going to do when he gets there? He meets another wheelie bin. And she's just about able to... To, to to join in it's this impromptu conversation it's it's the winging it um name a person whose name begins with b we're like oh we have to access that part of our brain improv actors are the best at it yeah yeah they've they've stretched their creative imaginative brains yeah so uh, is that what you think is why people one of the reasons people struggle with social anxiety is it because they're not able to access that part of their brain i think that part of their brain is probably not working as well their creative imaginative part of the brain because it's never been exercised we live in no, homes exactly. we live in homes where um it can you know if you live in a it, it's all about what what it what what environment we're in and you know I lived in a home um as a child that was you went to work you it, you you get home you eat you watch telly you clean up you go to bed that was it eat sleep repeat cycle yeah. and then I get into a relationship and his parents um are more middle class and they um they play tennis um they go to a pub quiz somebody paints if you shut down um nothing inspires you yeah mm. if you're alive and your senses are all fully working and um, sight sound touch smell then that's where we get our kind of aliveness from our joie de vie um if you're french i love joie de vie our thirst and our joy of life and so depression and anxiety they rob us of love and um, sense of belonging they rob us of the joy and the sparks um mm. that excite us so i can get really excited about growing tomato when i'm um not when i'm in an anxious state and i'm and i'm dealing with a divorce and uh, a separation anxiety um but when i'm well and i'm fully alive um all my senses are working and so i can imagine i can imagine the challenge of growing my own tomatoes yeah. And I love Italy. I've been there before and, and it's my one of my favorite places. I love I'm um and this is my sense of taste, um, the bold flavors. And so actually I can imagine growing my tomatoes. I will probably photograph them because sight, the bright red color of them. Yeah. And so I I'll, I'll photograph my tomatoes. Um, and then I can imagine putting them in a salad um, and pretending I'm in Italy, play, pretendness, creative imagination. So I am, I am, I, everything goes full cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm growing the tomatoes. I'm photographing them. The color is, is, is exciting my brain, this yeah. bright redness of them. And I am then able to create my Italian meal and I can imagine the f the flavors of the balsamic vinegar and the the pesto, the boldness of the pesto with with fresh um, garlic, yeah, and basil. And so um, the full aliveness is we we taste, we smell, we're inspired by all the stuff around us. Um, I see a recipe and. 
um, uh, uh, Stuart Brown, who's the play researcher, says playfulness isn't a set activity. It's actually a state of mind. So yeah. when I'm fully alive and I'm fully well, um, I've got my aliveness, everything is playtime, whether I'm growing tomatoes, whether I'm in my kitchen, yeah, Ooh. whether I'm in my therapy room, it's creativity, it's playtime, and I get to experiment. Can I make this dish? Can I make it taste nice? Can I make it look like the restaurant? My poor, um, long-suffering ex-husband could not take his pasta away till it had, you know, sprinkles of parmesan and black pepper on. Now it's finished. Now you can have it. Yeah. Um. So I'm also talking about passion. Yeah. Um. Aliveness is passion. It's that. Um. Aliveness. Uh, our senses. We bring passion. We bring it. What is passion? I think it's a life force that we bring. It's not, we, most people will see passion as what are you passionate about? Your work, your hobby. No, passion for me is something that is inside of me, a life force that I bring. And I think it comes from pain, anger, injustice. Mm. And they collide to create this bonfire of passion that then is brought to, you know, I don't just, somebody told me that there's, there's nothing about you that's bloody ordinary. And I was like, oh, and then she was like, your, your roast potatoes, you bought your, you bought your olive oil from Italy. You grow, you, you grew your rosemary. Yeah. And then you, you created these roast potatoes, garlic and rosemary roast potatoes, um, and you didn't settle for ordinary. You wanted the nice olive oil that ha has some taste that Italians do so well. And you wanted the right, you grew your own rosemary and yeah. then you put it together and you can imagine the taste explosion of that. My senses are fully alive. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Because passion is, it's, it's, it is a force. It is a life force. It, it's either a sense of injustice or a, a drive in some way isn't it it's a drive yeah and it's not very controllable I have to say mm -hmm. I have you know if I had to get a t-shirt it would be um untamable unshameable or um yeah um um what I'm wearing or what I'm if I'm swearing is none of your fucking business as a woman yeah mm -hmm. um and so yeah that a, a bit you know when we're fully alive we're not it's messy we're not we're not neat and tidy I'm messy, I swear, I get really fucked off about stuff and I have to apologise because I'm like, oh, shit, I've overreacted in my passionate, untamable self, yeah? It, um, it is an absolute blessing and it is an absolute curse at the same time, yeah? Yeah, and so, yeah, um, play, creativity. When I ask people, are they creative? And they often say to me, oh, I don't paint. It's so much more than that. Creativity, it's like, it might be that, you know, what you choose to wear. It might be how, well, how you choose to put your kitchen, your cushions in your lounge, yeah? So actually, um, I think creativity and play are the underutilized resources. And in particularly in therapy, where mm -hmm. we can be so immersed in the trauma of something that yeah. we're not looking, you know, I I, I was abs I wanted to throw my fucking laptop out the window, Wendy, watching Louis Theroux and an anorexia documentary because it was so saturated in trauma. But they won. I wanted to ask this um, lady who was uh, living with anorexia. Um, you know, I'd love to have asked her, where's your healthy parts of you? Is there a dancer in here? Is there a singer? Is there a photographer? Is there a writer? Is there a dog lover? Is there a wine lover? Is there, I don't know, yeah, what else are you? You know, the, 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 you know, I think humans are like mirables, disco mirables, yeah? yeah. We're not one thing. We're a million, th Absolutely. million different things in one body. And we, the mirable, the, the disco mirable, it hangs from the ceiling. And depending on the light, depending on the, 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 the wind, different bits of it will sparkle. And if it's really dark and the lights go out, none of it sparkles. And so we are we are live, living, breathing human beings, feeling human beings. And we collapse, we fall apart, we go back together. And we don't allow, we don't live in a society that allows us to collapse, fall apart and go back together. It's 
it, oh. it's it's toxic it's it's toxic positivity we're expected to just bounce back and the movies do it too so you know homelands carrie and homeland she's blown up and then two minutes later she's back in a suit and doing something and i'm like that woman would that's years of recovery if you've been in a bomb explosion like that it's you know it, the possibility of being traumatized is massive and so there's this denial of trauma everywhere we turn. Six sessions to sort this client out. No. Yeah. I'm, we, yeah. No. I'm laughing because I'm identifying with you. We both feel the same way about that. That, yeah, you can get fixed. All you need is positivity. All you need is to think positive. Fuck All you off. Need is I'm, having a, I'm having a breakdown. Give me space to have it. Yeah, absolutely. But that, that's what we get. Oh, you just need just need to think positively. There's no it's anything with just after it doesn't really need saying. Like, what? All you yes, okay, you're gonna it, um activate the endorphins and, and and so on, but but that's not the whole fucking story, is it? It's Timing not. is crucial here. What? Timing is so crucial. Somebody who I didn't have a lot of emotional availability days after um my 23 year relationship ended said yeah. to me if i'm lonely just go get a volunteer job that i could, hadn't got out of bed for five days i totally collapsed and that's pretty normal um but actually i was made to feel it's um, abnormal for um for feeling this way yeah um and um and actually i am now 50 months on about to go and do some uh, uh, volunteer work 15 months on i'm ready to um uh, realize that um having lost a family a little bit under occupied and so what fills the void actually you know a, a couple of hours volunteering um around people i'm mm. i'm now ready to explore that and i may be i may yo-yo in and out as i'm well or unwell yeah but actually it fits and i can yo-yo in and out so it's okay yeah. Um, so time it's precision timing we it throw is. things at people that they're not ready for and I think I, I reckon that another part I recognize what something I was told when I had breast cancer I was told you'll you'll get through it you're a strong person oh, I fucking hate that as well I really you know it was or you'll get stronger or um you're a strong person i'm fucking sick of being strong wendy yeah, i don't I want to do it on my own strong. i want no, people it's... to cry on i want people to call i want people to scoop me up when i can't feed myself and fucking yeah. feed me <laughs> yeah and i felt the same way you the pressure that was put on me and there was that well you're not going to get any help from me because you're strong and you can do that it's and, it, and it's almost is... an abandonment and a rejection yeah. isn't it yeah, yeah. You, what because I've always been like over efficient and a real hard worker, there is this resi there is this um trust that is really misplaced that I'm okay and you'll get through it and I don't. And the other one is oh you need a professional I I can't help you here and I'm like actually I need kindness I need compassion I need soft people who can bear my distress with me and not try and change me and and can just accept and come and sit in the shit hit teeth and help me hold this but actually we don't live in a compassionate world um and so yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm spitty i'm angry and pissed off and these new experiences take me to a new kind of knowing that I ch it's changed my practice and how I work. I'm not throwing suggestions at people. I'm like, what kind of not fucking coping is this? Yeah. Are you drinking half a bottle of vodka? What are you doing to cope? Are you drinking half a bottle of vodka a day? Yeah. Um, and I'm in no judgment if that's what you're yeah. doing right now to keep yourself alive. I'm in no judgment yeah. if all you've managed, and you've said it to me in collapsed states, have you eaten today, Mal? And I'm like, yeah, I managed a Snickers bar and a glass of water and I've gone back to bed you know and I think we're not and you know if I was to write a book and people keep asking me but the dyslexic me is like yeah I'm I'm doing it on LinkedIn I think in little bits and drabs it's not very organized um it would be that you know it's okay to not fucking cope and no one's really honest no one's really honest well, we're not society doesn't allow it they don't want us to be honest and and, no. and 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 as I post stuff that is 
feels negative and really like raw, honest and messy. I feel the I feel the pressure to to tidy up yeah. and be more positive. Yeah. But yeah. actually, no, people need to know that at my fucking worst day, I was locked in a psych ward. And I, when I couldn't get sleep medication and I was in a mess, I drank half a bottle of vodka and took antihistamines. It yeah. was, it kept me alive. It's not healthy. It's not great, but it yeah. kept me alive. And so the, the privilege of self-care and, and what we do to cope, if we can, if we have a safe space to talk about that, we get to healthier coping strategies in time. Yeah. yeah. We're always collaborating. We're always calibrating. We're always adjusting and we go in and out of survival mode. This 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 shitty theory that as you get older, you get wiser and you're more healed and you've done your work. No. <laughs> this is I got the I was listening to Tembi Lock, a screenwriter, talking to Brene Brown on you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna share where you know, this light bulb um, was like, yeah, she's so damn right. Um, she's talking to Brené Brown on Unlocking Us. Go, go watch her, uh, her thing, uh, uh, her series on Netflix from scratch. It's honest. It's yeah. raw. We've talked about it before. Yeah. Um, um, it's awkward to watch um, because that is life. Um, and actually, we don't want to talk about the dirt of life. Um, and we need yeah. to because everybody has um things you know actually as we go through life we are continually brought back to the, our childhoods to the stuff that um you know that we need to address i didn't really want it shoved in my face and like you know having like grenades going off in my body and my nervous system um nobody asks for it and we often do this denial also of, oh, all things happen for a reason. Somebody said to me, oh, we're never given anything. We're never given things, never given more than we can cope with. I'm I like, knew that was coming and I was thinking, what? I've heard it yeah. so many times. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we fucking do. And actually, um, uh, go look at the psych wards. Go look at our suicide rates. And actually, the common denominator for most of the people is lack of care, lack of support. I'm on my own, yeah, or the not the right support. So we 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 have to hold our own too muchness because other people can't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When we talk about the difficult things, I mean, I if I'm in a social setting, and um, I've had it so many times, not not really close friends but there are times when I've been in a group of people and they say oh that's a bit heavy conversation I yeah. oh it's to... awkward yeah yes it's awkward that's what they're saying they want to sanitize yeah yeah excuse you're... me if I'm making you feel uncomfortable I tell you what living with post-traumatic stress disorder when you're really dysregulated and you're experiencing terror um it is fucking uncomfortable sorry yeah. you you have five minutes of it I live with it yeah yeah but that, that's where we're at isn't it it's uh, yeah that sense of i don't want to go there this is too uncomfortable but they, yeah right. again, and i feel so to... angry and shitty but um you know in a more softer moment i'd be like i get that you can't de deal with that level of uncomfortable you're not that self-aware you probably don't you're not you know people who can't deal with their own emotional stuff they're not gonna be have space and room for yours yeah, Absolutely. we just don't have enough emotionally available people in the world. No. We don't have enough doctors. We don't have enough kind, compassionate humans. We don't have enough uh, people who get trauma in all of this shitty stuff. Nobody ever asked, what is happening to you that you can't cope with and what have you lived through? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And how can I help you? So how can I help you feel safe? If everybody who knew me invited me over to their house for dinner, I wouldn't have struggled. Yeah. Yeah. But no, you you just need a professional, some kind of magic guru. And yes, we are magic gurus because we have the theory, the knowledge, how your body works. Do you need more movement? How do we create joy for you? How do we help you create safety? How do we, you know, it is magic, it's an art, it's a science. Um, and it is it is powerful when we get it right. But I'm going to say it, there's too much shit therapy. There's too much of your, I, somebody said to me, how do you feel about CBT? Well, you can imagine, yeah. Um, my middle classness is, oh, do fuck off. Um, yeah, um, it's not cognitive. 
Yeah. It's instinctual. It's, it's, just, it's, 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 it's my body. And it's, it's not faulty it. thinking. It's actually a sane response to what we have survived and lived through. And yes, Absolutely. all the coaches, anybody who's listening is going, you're not just taking responsibility for your life. We acceptance, there's an order for this year. Acceptance for safety. Um, we heal through the bodies, up through the lower brain, up to the thinking brain. We build new neural pathways. We are changing bodies. We are changing the brains through the plasticity neuroscience. And we do that with compassion and care and huge amounts of patience. Um, we don't do it by telling people their thought, their, their thinking is faulty. You just got to change your thinking and everything changes. If it was that flipping simple, I'd be a chef. What would you do, Wendy, if if we <laughs> eradicated mental health? What would you do? Gosh, what would I do? I I would actually. I just want to be a traveller. I want to travel around the world and just be a, tra a traveller. Absolutely. Yeah, immerse myself in other cultures and learn about them. That's what Assum I would be. Absolutely. Yeah. If somebody has done forty-four countries and counting and is. Um, completely in love with traveling, uh, different uh, uh, foods, different cultures, um, which all come into my work, you know, and looking through the lens of culture, looking through what does this mean to be a woman or a male, old, young, your socioeconomic background, do you, you know, if you have money, if you don't have money, what resources do you have? Absolutely. So, yeah, if we could just change our thinking yeah um, um i would i would be i would be i yeah i we wouldn't have to go through the you know there's things money can't buy and actually you have to work at and that is um recovering and putting yourself back together again you can't buy relationships you have to do the work to build them yeah yeah um it's just a it's not a, it's not a conversation this one wendy i'm apologizing it's just a full-on rant yeah well that's you didn't I get a word in edgeways to give your your views i want to you give didn't you get a word in edgeways bless you <laughs> but that's it that's how it is you, you know that's why i invite people onto my podcast to actually give their passion is not you. controllable <laughs> Who wants to control you? I love you. I love your aliveness. Untamable, unshameable. We, yeah, we need T-shirts. We need T-shirts. I know when I first met you, and it was on LinkedIn, and I thought, who is this woman? Who is it? Gobby Cow. <laughs> it was. It was like, my God, I, yeah. And I started following you, and it was like, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this woman, but actually, no, she's, Marmite. she's gutsy. She says it as it is. Don't agree with everything she says, but bloody hell, she's got she's got passion. She's got drive. She's got yeah. So that was yeah. how I first started connecting with you. As one of my clients put in a, a testimonial, uh, you know, recommendations, batshit crazy, but passionate and a thirst for life that is pretty unstoppable. And yeah, this year it has been stopped. There's been suicidality. There's a really dark spaces, and I still pop in and out, a yo-yo in and out of them. But that that yeah, that is trauma. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's been stopped. I would say it's been paused on occasions. Yeah, I think because they, you still. There's still the other side of you. It does come back at times. And yeah, I, I yeah. It is our brilliance and our shitness, they live in the same bodies, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. I have a terrified chronic self data, but I also can go back to fierce compassion. Yeah. 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 That's what makes yeah. it such a. The dualities of. Person. Yeah. Yeah. The contradiction. Own, which a lot of people don't. Um, we are walking, no, talking. talking to you today. Thank you. Thank so you. What's one easy way that people can get in touch with you? Um, uh, uh, maybe by going to my website, maljreilly.co.uk. Great, because I'm going to put all the details in the show notes. Yeah. But um, if people are just listening, they would just want a quick and easy way to... Yeah, I answer anything, to be fair. Twitter, LinkedIn, emails, yeah. WhatsApp, yeah, it'll phone all calls. Go in there. It'll all go in there. Yeah. But, yeah, thank you so much for today. I've, I've really, it's been, yeah. As always, it's always a, a, an interesting conversation. I'm so. never accused of being boring, that one's for sure. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks for having me, Wendy. (laughs) I hope you found this episode interesting as well as helpful. Do get in touch if you would like to learn more about working with me. My email address is info at wendycapewell.co.uk. Take good care of yourself. Until next time.